What are the craziest robberies people will do? Let's get started with number five, only TikToking away. Ulyssa Mendoza, a popular Mexican TikTok star with 1.4 million followers, has found herself at the center of a controversy after a brazen jewelry heist took place at the upscale burger jewelry store in Mexico City's Antera Shopping Center. The crime involved four armed robbers who shattered windows with mallets and made away with a bunch of watches worth nearly $100,000. Ulyssa Mendoza herself wasn't directly implicated in the heist, but her association with the prime suspect, Marco N., did create some problems. The police caught up to Marco the day after the robbery, arresting him in a luxury van, which was believed to be the getaway vehicle. Inside the van, authorities discovered not only the stolen watches, but also mallets, axes, a significant quantity of nose beers, a 9mm, and an overrated TikTok star. The discovery made it a little difficult for Mendoza to claim innocence, so she was arrested with everyone else. Nevertheless, Mendoza insisted that her involvement was limited to her romantic relationship with the alleged mastermind who was only identified as Marco N. Mendoza's TikTok followers, as well as her Instagram audience of over 165,000, organized support campaigns carrying banners and slogans that assumed her innocence. And even though she also says she's innocent, riding in a van with a dude that just robbed a place and who left everything in the van that he used to do the robbery led her to getting accused of concealment by reception. During the investigation, Mendoza was held for two months at the recommendation of a judge dealing with the case. This brought out some weirdly dedicated followers who chanted outside the women's prison, condemning what they perceived to be a violation of human rights. Marco N. was charged, and Mendoza's account has been dark since her detainment. At the time of this video, she has yet to be charged. It's kind of weird that we're in this new age of celebrity where someone can get so famous on a platform like TikTok that their fans will group outside of a prison to protest. But she's so good at lip syncing, there's no way she could be involved in a robbery. You believe she's actually singing when you watch her, like an innocent person. Number four, the slowest theft. A trio of hefty female shoplifters orchestrated a heist at a Burlington store in Sacramento, California. The perpetrators were caught on camera making a slow motion getaway with shopping carts laden with stolen merchandise. As alarms blared in the background, a bystander videoed the incident and can be heard drawing attention to the shoplifters. The footage showed the three women lumbering across the parking lot, gluttonous carts overflowing with pilfered clothing and shoes like a herd of mass Mastodons trudging across the Arctic tundra. The criminals loaded the stolen goods into the trunk of a red Dodge Charger, completely unfazed by the fact that everyone was well aware of their thievery. The location targeted by the shoplifters, a Burlington store, served as another example of the growing concern around organized retail crime. These perpetrators blatantly walked out the front of the building without any sense of urgency, suggesting a level of disrespect that reflects a growing trend. The video taken by the witness got the getaway driver's face and the license plate of the car, so they're not getting away. But from the footage, it doesn't look like they care. The incident shows the increasing challenges faced by retailers due to a surge in organized shoplifting incidents carried out by criminal groups. These crimes, often executed with varying degrees of sophistication, have led to a significant rise in what the retail industry refers to as shrinkage. <laughs> encompassing losses from theft, fraud, and employer. This particular heist serves as a reminder of the growing problem not only for this specific retailer, but for the retail industry at large. The National Retail Federation reported that shrinkage cost retailers a staggering $94.5 billion in 2021, up from $90.8 billion the previous year. The Sacramento Police Department has confirmed its active investigation into the incident. We're not entirely sure how much of an investigation investigation there will actually be, since everything was caught on camera. There probably won't be much of a foot chase if they decide to run. Number 3. Dressing up 
Andrew Bluck, Adam Merkitt, and Tanya Dox orchestrated a series of crimes that involved impersonating police officers, kidnapping, and robbing delivery drivers. In one instance, the crew approached a delivery driver claiming to be undercover officers investigating a suspicious package in the van. After forcing their way into the vehicle alongside the driver, they drove to a remote location where Dox joined them in her silver seat Leon, which is basically a Volkswagen Golf. While dressed in pretty good police costumes, the trio looked loaded thousands of pounds worth of stolen goods, including TVs and smartphones, into the car before leaving the driver stranded without his van. The car driven by Dox was used as the getaway vehicle for their stolen loot. Dox attempted to distance herself from the crimes by saying she was asleep in her car during the robberies, but evidence later revealed her active involvement in driving the vehicle and participating in the robberies. The stolen items included TVs, smartphones, and other electronics, representing a significant haul for the group. In a subsequent robbery, Robbery, just two days after the first incident, Bluck and Merkit targeted another delivery driver in a nearby area. Again, posing as police officers, they followed the driver from a depot and commandeered the vehicle, stealing thousands of pounds worth of goods. The pair escalated their criminal activities even further by engaging in an axe robbery, where they targeted a convenience store, stealing 4,000 pounds. Bluck and Merkit were ultimately arrested and sentenced for their roles in the crimes. Bluck received a nine-year and seven-month prison sentence, while Merkit was handed a nine-year term. Dox, who initially denied her involvement and claimed to be asleep during the robberies, was found guilty and sentenced to two years, six months in prison. Number two, just doing their job. Rachel Dimitro and Bob Eli orchestrated a series of burglaries that targeted vulnerable victims in Florida. The pair posed as utility workers while they burgled houses as the victims stood out front. Dimitro and Eli's crimes mainly targeted the elderly, exploiting their trust and further emphasizing the fact that they have no conscience. The preferred method involved Dimitro and her accomplice approaching their victims under the guise of being Florida Power and Light employees. They would lull the victims into a false sense of security manipulating their way into the victim's homes. Once inside, one would distract the homeowners with conversation, diverting their attention from the theft happening right behind them. During these distractions, the thieves would pilfer valuable possessions like jewelry and cash from the unsuspecting victims. Many of these stolen items had immense sentimental value, such as a charm bracelet from 1961 and a pocket watch, making the losses all the more devastating for the victims. Both Dimitro and Eli were eventually arrested for their involvement in these robberies. When Dimitro was caught, she was wearing some of the stolen jewelry, which doesn't seem like a good idea, but we also just have a thing about wearing evidence of crimes in public. That just isn't a great idea, you know? Eli was arrested, but official charges against him were not made public. However, Dimitro faced charges that included burglary, grand theft, and violating probation. The victims, who were already vulnerable due to their age, have had to endure the trauma of being deceived and robbed in their own homes. Fortunately, a lot of sentimental items were recovered. If you're enjoying these cases, be sure to stay tuned for our past release to find out how this couple was able to rob Jason Kidd. Number one, the worst time to leave. In a heart-wrenching incident that unfolded in Queens, New York, Yuchi Lin, a 79-year-old woman, became the unintended victim of a brazen jewelry heist. Yuchi Lin, in her advanced age, found herself caught in the crosshairs of a robbery when two thieves stormed into Diamond Collect, a jewelry store in Queens. Lin was minding the store while her daughter, Eva Chen, briefly stepped out when the criminals targeted her during their half-million-dollar heist. One of the assailants pretended to be an Amazon delivery man, dropping off a package outside the store's entrance. Lin thought the delivery man had left, but he was actually hiding around the corner, waiting for her to open the door. Eventually, Lin did open the door to grab the package, and in that instant, the guy lunged at her, easily overpowering her attempts to shut it again. Things continued to escalate, as the robbers then forced their way into the store, battering Lin in the process. For some reason, these guys thought they needed a firearm to control a nearly 80-year-old woman it already overpowered. So, they pointed the weapon at her head and demanded that she empty the store safe. Lynn, not really wanting to be a hero after the damage she'd already taken, probably would have, except she didn't have the key. The robbers instead ransacked the entire store, making off with an estimated $1.1 million worth of jewelry, up from the initially reported $500,000. Adding an interesting wrinkle to the story was a phone call that Lynn's daughter, Eva, received the day before. The call came from someone claiming to be from Amazon, asking about the store's opening hours and mentioning a two-package delivery. While at the time, 
time, it might have seemed unusual. In hindsight, the call is really weird, since we've never had Amazon ask when we're going to be home for a delivery. Thankfully, Yuchi Lin survived the violent robbery. Although shaken and traumatized by the incident, she managed to recover and return home after receiving medical treatment. As far as we know, she's doing okay. At the time of this video, police were still investigating and looking for two more suspects connected to the robbery, leaving all four still at large. If Lin had the safe key, the thieves would have likely cleaned out the entire place, making the loss total. And with the way insurance works, there's no guarantee it would all be covered. But it also would have possibly saved an old woman from further injury. Considering their hefty take, who knows how much more it would have increased. What do you think? Was it better for Lynn to not have the key? These homeless millionaires are Tracy and Daryl Hotsana. Greed and influence were the two toxic ingredients that turned their criminal activity into a millionaire's life of luxury. They were a married couple who enjoyed the finer things in life and documented everything through their YouTube channel. The Hutsanas offered a behind-the-scenes look at their lifestyle as a millionaire power couple. They relished in the laps of luxury while treating their clients to luxurious items such as yachts, exotic sports cars, and much more. They show off their exotic destinations and expensive lifestyle in various vlogs filled with expensive cars and opulent homes. When they needed a place to stay, the Hutsanas crashed at their clients' beautiful vacation homes and penthouses, documenting it on YouTube. Hutsana often boasted about her A-list clients, who she'd regularly name drop. The couple was as fabulous as the lavish life they lived. Or, at least that's what they wanted their audience to believe. Anybody would be jealous of their lives. They pared down to earth personas with all the perks of being famous. Usually those two things don't go hand in hand. However, it was all an elaborate scam to gain influence. In reality, those closest to Tracy knew her as a serial con artist who used her influence for her own selfish gains. The same celebrities she boasted about were being scammed out of millions of dollars. If it was all an elaborate lie, how did the couple manage to rub elbows with high-status individuals and roll around Los Angeles in a Rolls Royce or new Mercedes? Hutsana hid her scamming through her company, Elite Lux Life. Tracy and Daryl were the owners of the VIP concierge business in Los Angeles that, as they put it, could put a price tag on just about anything their clients desire. Hutsana's business accommodated their clients' lifestyle management, which meant providing them with anything they desired. They provided many different services for their clients, like exclusive restaurant reservations, booking vacations, securing exclusive tickets for concerts, and anything in between. Elite Lux Life helped Hutsana build her celebrity clientele, also known as the Victims, who fell prey to her scams. Hutsana gained access to her client's personal accounts through an elaborate scheme that built trust over time through her company. Hutsana needed to fund the lifestyle she posted about on social media. Exotic cars, yacht vacations, and exquisite homestays were all paid for by her unsuspecting victims. Every Bonnie needs her Clyde, and Mr. Hutsana is no exception. He had his own brush with fraud. In 2010, he pled guilty to cashing multiple checks belonging to NFL running back and former high school teammate Reggie Bush. His sentencing included 600 hours of community service and paying over $60,000 in restitution. One of the victims who suffered the most from Hutsana scamming was Jumana Kidd. Jumana Kidd was most notably known for her complicated marriage to retired NBA player Jason Kidd. She hired Tracy as her assistant, obviously unaware of her scamming ways. Jumana saw Tracy as a close friend. Unfortunately, Tracy only saw her as another pool of free money. In 2015, Kidd was diagnosed with breast cancer and moved near Calabasas, California. She was in dire need of a personal assistant who could run errands and provide additional work as Kidd underwent radiation treatment. Kidd was introduced to Elite Lux Life through a friend, and she quickly sought out Hutsana. Hutsana agreed to take on the position, but could only dedicate herself to part-time, which Kidd quickly accepted. Because of the non-traditional hours, Hutsana suggested sending a monthly invoice to Kidd to skip the paperwork and hassle of the hiring process. This also circumvented a background check, something Kidd should have looked into. Kid believed she was getting a better deal. Eventually, Kid trusted her so much that she gave Hutsana access to her home and personal information. She was beyond appreciative of Hutsana's hard work. But when over $300,000 went missing, Kid was left with no choice but to confront her employee turned friend about these missing funds. When Kid confronted her, Hutsana broke down into one of her notorious sob stories and quickly gained the sympathy of her latest victim. Kid decided not to press charges and even gave Hutsana a second chance because she meant 
meant that much to her family. Kitsana was elated and kept up appearances of being the happy employee for the next few years. However, a dark past lurked beneath the depths of Hutsana's persona, a past that a simple background check would have uncovered. Hutsana had her fare of skeletons in her closet. A simple search of the name Hutsana would show the past scamming lives of Tracy and her husband. In 2005, Hutsana, known then as Tracy Lynn Show Vissian, worked for a staffing company that connected business with contractors. She created two fake contractors and hired them to work for an insurance company. Hutsana had their paychecks funneled into her and her husband's account. She collected over $168,000 from the company. To hide her tracks, Hutsana went as far as falsifying her own passport with a fake image glued over her own. In 2007, she was arrested for identity theft and wire fraud. There were many other encounters with the law, like using forged checks to purchase cars and appliances, using someone else's social security number and name, and fraudulently receiving a passport. Passport. However, these crimes all came while Tracy was married to her first husband, Paul Vissian. He stood by her side for 12 years, never believing in her innocence every step of the way. The life of crime started early for Hutsana whose sister gave a brief understanding of their childhood. Hutsana didn't have the greatest of upbringings. As the youngest child to distant parents, she was primarily raised by her sisters. Hutsana grew up in a home that seemed normal from the outside, according to Deborah Lindstrom, her older sister. Lindstrom gave accounts of what it was like growing up with the blossoming con artist who started scamming at a young age. Lindstrom claimed that her sister had an undeniable charm that worked in her favor and she could talk anyone into anything. Hutsana's first occurrences with her life of crime started with simple theft such as stealing her sister's driver's license, which eventually led to stealing from their parents. The scamming got worse, and Hutsana even opened multiple credit cards in her grandmother's name. Hutsana still denies these claims. The scams knew no bounds. One turning point in Hutsana's life, according to her sister, was when she scammed her way into a fancy rental car. Hutsana went to a local car dealership while living in Los Angeles. She knew she wanted a fancy car to drive around town, and she wasn't going to let anything get in her way. She approached the car dealer and provided him with an elaborate story about working on the set of Jingle All the Way starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. She explained to the man that she worked for the actor directly and that Schwarzenegger demanded the nicest car available on the lot. The ploy was a success. Nutsana drove off in an expensive sports car, but this was just the beginning of her scamming lifestyle. One of Hutsana's first victims was a client named Jackie Elman. The two met when Elman was looking for furniture for her new place in Los Angeles. She just moved from Palm Springs after finalizing a divorce. After picking up the furniture, Elman was intrigued by the nice couches and even nicer accommodations after Hutsana offered to deliver the items to her. Elman was charmed by the outright friendliness of Hutsana, and the two hit it off right away. Feeling their relationship growing stronger, Hutsana wanted to see how much she could get from Elman. So the con artist fed her new victim a sob story about her home in Malibu suffering from dangerous mold, leaving her and her family homeless. Elman was devastated and just so happened to have her Palm Springs home up for rent since moving. She let Hutsana live there free of charge because she believed she was helping a friend. Unbeknownst to Elman, there was no mold. Hutsana was evicted from her house for trying to pay her rent with a forged check. Elman even allowed Hutsana to sleep on her couch whenever she was out of town for work. But soon, Elman noticed some personal belongings going missing. Items like expensive designer purses. Elman believed she had gained a true, genuine friend and she was doing what any good friend would do. Help. However, Hutsana quickly saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. Elman described Hutsana as someone who acts like they're in a bind and doesn't know what to do, which allowed her to take advantage of those closest to her. Elman didn't realize just how badly her friend was taking advantage of her helping hand until she received a bill for a credit card that she never signed up for. When she saw the charges for car repairs and even a car rental service, Elman knew something was fishy. Elman texted Hutsana, demanding to know about the card in her name. Hutsana called her to admit the truth. However, she didn't didn't give Elman the whole truth. Instead, she provided another sob story, this time about her supposed drug-addicted husband. He needed to go to a high-priced rehab. Elman never got the whole story until Hutsana was eventually convicted of wire fraud and identity theft. After her encounter with Elman, her ex-husband Vissian had a change of heart. He flipped on his wife and pleaded guilty to being an accessory to mail fraud for his role in cashing bad checks. At the time, Vissian didn't believe his wife would create false identities just to pad their bank accounts. But when Vissian discovered his wife's twisted double life of scamming and greed, he flipped sides. Hutsana agreed to a plea deal for wire fraud and aggravated identity theft and was sentenced to 75 months in prison. While in jail, Hutsana discovered Buddhism and started going to counseling groups.
Hoops, where she admitted that she had learned her lesson. She was ready to put her criminal past behind her and turn a new leaf. Andy Richards, a chaplain at the LA Metropolitan Detention Center, even wrote a letter that claimed Utsana was an individual worthy of a second chance. He probably wishes he could take that back. This leads us back to Miss Kidd, who ultimately agreed with Richards and decided Hutsana deserved a second chance. Kidd allowed Hutsana to keep working for her, and they quickly rebuilt their friendship. Hutsana worked hard, and her duties continued to grow. She picked up the children, collected the mail, and even watched the dog whenever the family went out of town. The family grew such a bond with Hutsana that Kidd's children saw her as a second mother. The tight-knit relationship allowed Hutsana to steal Kidd's identity and access her bank accounts. Unbeknownst to Kidd, Hutsana siphoned money from her savings accounts and even her children's college funds. At the end of the four-year scam, Kidd was out upwards of $2 million. All of that money went towards funding Hutsana's fake millionaire lifestyle. Hutsana's scamming lifestyle eventually caught up, and in February 2021, she was arrested for wire fraud and aggravated identity theft. Hutsana faces up to 22 years in prison for crimes against her trusted clients turned friends. Hutsana still claims her innocence, quoted by the New York Times, saying she'd be happy to elaborate once the case was behind her. Hutsana desired a lavish lifestyle more than anything. She wanted to live like her favorite celebrities, living a life that would make the average Instagrammer jealous. Now, she'll probably be posting selfies from jail as the legal process plays out. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what's the longest time you'd wait for your significant other if they were in prison?